We may never know which animal was the first hunter, but scientists believe there is an animal living today that gives us a good idea of what that ancient trailblazing ancestor looked like. This animal is a flatworm. They may be among the most obscure animals on Earth, but near the base of our family tree, a similar creature was the first to move with intent, to explore the world, to hunt. And their direct descendants have spread to every corner of the world. Scientists have described about 20,000 different species of flatworms so far, tenaciously surviving in almost every environment. On land, in the oceans, in freshwater ponds, and in the strangest habitat of all, inside the bodies of other animals. The development of the hunter is one of evolution's great success stories. Like many flatworms today, the modern planarian is a smooth hunting machine. But so too were its ancestors, and they lived over half a billion years ago. An ancient worm was the first to develop a new type of nervous system, a centralized one, hooked up to sensors at one end of the body. This was the first animal with a head, within it, the first brain. In that head were some stunning innovations, a pair of eyes. Eyes that could sense both the intensity of light and the direction from which it came. Placing sense organs near the brain helped fire signals to the rest of the body at top speed. Those signals could spark a sturdy set of muscles running down and around the entire body. These muscles, along with millions of tiny cilia, propelled the worm on a power glide over a self-made cushion of slime. Talent for the hunt is a legacy from the ancient worm, the first animal to have sense organs in stereo. Two eyes, two nostrils, two ears. Stereo senses allow a hunter to sense exactly where its prey is by triangulation, then react and adjust in mere fractions of a second. The mouth of the flatworm, oddly, is not in its head. It's on the underside of the body. From this mouth, the flatworm launches a device called the pharynx, which it uses to suck down its prey. As the planarians scavenge a fish, the pharynx goes into action. Once inside, food moves through a gut so extensive it reaches to every square millimeter of the flatworm's body.
Some of the most sensational sexual habits in the animal world are found in the sandy shallows of the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia. Over millions of years, some flatworms here have developed remarkable sexual equipment and strange ways to go with it. In fact, the first hunter was also the first animal with an internal system to deliver sperm to an egg. Basic internal fertilization changed the shape of life. The flatworm's ancestor combined the ability to move with a new way to mate. These innovations still define our sexual lives today. We may never know what the first animal courtship was like, but these flatworms can show us how even simple animals add their own twist. For them, sex is more like war than love. It's known as penis fencing, and the worms are the swordsmen. From the midsection of each flatworm, double daggers protrude. Each dagger is actually a penis. The first one who can make a successful jab delivers its sperm. Sperm can be injected anywhere on the skin where it's then absorbed. The losing flatworm must then bear the burden of motherhood, committing valuable resources to having offspring. Flatworms are hermaphroditic. They have both male and female sex organs. Being hermaphroditic is a great strategy to maximize the chances to reproduce. Primordial worms may seem simple, but they were the first animals to pursue food and sex. They changed the shape of life on Earth. More than half a billion years of evolution separate these modern animals from ancient worms. Yet even the most powerful beasts today are still built on the same plan, bilateral, with a head and a tail, and sophisticated stereo senses directed by a brain. Worms were the first animals built with this blueprint, and the same basic design builds a human today. It may be hard to believe, but humans and flatworms have a lot in common. Cells in a developing human are told when, where, and how to grow, all because an ancient worm was the first to assemble the genetic instructions for building this brand new kind of body. And it all began eons ago with a body that went out into the world and conquered.